All right, guys. Let's do an episode I should have done a really long time ago about a really practical subject, which I'm not known for in the first place. But let me catch you up. I've just finished up this guitar right here. You've seen it before. It's in a... You've seen it before. Uh, you've also seen... Okay, this is the AFTA, right? Okay. Um, and you can tell that I'm done with it because the last thing I do is put a grease zerk in my guitars. You can always tell that they're my guitars. Tammy's signature and a grease zerk. Why grease zerk? In case your playing gets rusty. That's right. So, I have to ship this guitar. Now, when you do as many episodes as I've done, starting off with cigar box guitars, you can only do a couple hundred cigar box guitar videos before you start getting repetitive. And then I've done a lot of arch top videos and license plates and who knows what. But I've always been going to uh, discipline myself, <laughs> that's funny, to do some stuff about the shed, the tools I use and the stuff like that, some practical stuff. So. Since I'm going to ship this guitar, I thought, have I ever done an episode about shipping guitars? The ins and outs of it, what it costs, some good experiences, some bad experiences. Because this one is going to Ireland. It's going from Southern California to Ireland. And the cost of this guitar can become astronomical. Number one, if it gets there damaged. Number two, if you don't use your head shipping it. And number three, if it gets there and somebody says, oh, you know what? This isn't what I thought I wanted. I was so loaded when I ordered the guitar. So let's take this episode and go through a number of things that will get you up to snuff when it comes time to deciding that I'm going to sell my guitars and I'm going to ship them and I'm actually not going to lose everything in my pocket doing it. So, first off, let's discuss why you would ship a guitar. Now, as we get going here, you're going to find out that I am not equipped and set up here to do everything I'm going to show you, but we're going to give it a whirl anyway. Pay attention, and I think I will save you a lot of money. So, the first question I want to ask you before you decide anything is, what are you selling? Why is it you're shipping guitars? So, the first question I want to ask you is, is there anybody that you know that is not building cigar box guitars now. Um, when I started, this would have been about seven or eight years ago, I had a great mentor. His name was Darren Dukes. Um, I have always had good luck getting parts from MGB guitars, guitar parts. Um, if you're in that business, check those two out, especially check out MGB, especially when it comes to pickups, pickups. Um, as you go through your tuners and all that kind of thing, you're going to get away from this kind of stuff and, and get into something a little bit better. But again, is the market saturated in cigar box guitars? I literally am looking at 60 Camacho boxes because when I build cigar box guitars, they are at a, out of a Camacho 60 by 6 box. That's all I use. So when I could get a hold of these, I bought up as many as I could get. So the day I retire and I start cranking stuff out, I am literally looking at 30 antique um, coffee cans. Because I build these, I know how to do it, I've got templates and stuff. But, again, what are you selling and what will the market bear? This is the first guitar I ever built. Some of you know the story. I built it for Tammy to play along with a stomp box to kind of show people what her 
um, potential was. I think I'm going to give you a link up there. A lot of you have seen the, the movie Margaret Garrett explains why she got this guitar. She gave it back to me after she signed it. She's got a different one, but um, this first guitar that I built, I would not give you $15 for it. It is the worst. It is a piece of wood that's cut down. The action on it was terrible. The neck bows, the tuners are the cheapest. The fret job, shaky. Um, RV sink drains. This is when I was still gluing them in before I would put um, a bolt through them and a wing nut to hold the box shut. But I literally would not give you $15 for this. Now it's signed by C6 Steve. That puts the value of it through the roof. Sentimentally, I would never get rid of this. Um, it's got uh, an emblem off a rig up truck. I used to run an oil field. So sentimentally, this is worth a lot to me. But in terms of when I built it, did I think that this was the greatest thing ever? Oh yeah, it was, you know, it was something. One of them things where you hear stories about somebody built a guitar for Paul McCartney. So the reason I'm talking to you about this is make sure that if you're selling these and you're first getting into it, make sure that people understand what they are going to get when the package arrives. Because if I would have sold this to somebody, very few people would have thought that it was as valuable to them as it was me, especially if they can play guitar of any kind. So ask yourself, are you up to speed? And you can determine whether your product is sellable, saleable, sailing, takes me away from all the money I've put into guitars and never sold one, etc. But see if there's a market locally where you could sell one and have somebody not return it. Now, when you ship one, all of my guitars, short of the kits I build and the arch tops I run across, which they are what they are, depending on what the fretboard layout is and, and the frets, any guitar I make will have a 25 and a half scale, which means back of the nut to the bridge is 25 and a half inches. So that puts my guitars, when I'm measuring them to ship them, to put in a box, I like to get them under three feet. That way I can pad this part that I have sticking out here, because this is how I ground my strings, you know, with all that. And, and then I can pad the headstock too. Once you start getting over 36 inches in height and package height, your cost starts going up. So sometimes it's not so much about weight as it is the bulk of the package, how tall it is, how wide it is. Now the post office, if you're using the United States Postal Service, they have some guidelines that you can check. Um, also, regardless of what the guitar is, we're going to talk about types of guitars you might ship and the likelihood that they'll survive in one piece and, and also the containers you'll ship them in. Um, we'll get into all that in a minute, but you want to remember when you're shipping to another country, there may be a, a fee. So if, say for example, you were sending this guitar to someone, you would declare it, as I said, without C6 Steve and Dad Magnuson's uh, signatures on it, it's worth, I could say $20, and I wouldn't be that far off. Um, and so when I make the declaration and it goes through customs, there are places that, believe it or not, will tax what people are selling coming into that country. So that country that is going into their economy isn't tore up by people producing stuff. I don't even want to get into all this. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But your guitar can get held up and there may be a tax or a fee. So whoever you're selling the guitar to is going to have to pay that tax or fee. Now, they may open up the case or the box to inspect it, and if they find out that there's some arch top in there that's worth 
$10,000 and you said it's worth three hundred. dollars well, chances are what you insured it for is going to be a number one indicator. Please don't ship a $5,000 guitar and insure it for $3,000. That's not going to be smart. But think about the value of the guitar as the market will bear, what tariffs or taxes there are going to be in addition to the fee you're charging, and what the shipping cost is. That right there is the entire cost of the guitar. Now, the person that you're shipping it to in England, I've shipped guitars to England, unless it's something that they just have to have from you, may walk down the street and save, uh, get basically the same guitar, a three or four string uh, cigar box or license plate guitar from someone over there at half the price, even if the product is the same quality or something, unless you're selling something that's unique to you, all the shipping, especially out of the country, is going to escalate your prices. Now, let's talk about the worst nightmare ever. You get somebody that is, they order a guitar from you. They're talking to you. By the way, when people are, there's a difference between people who are interested in buying your guitars and people that hit you with, what does your guitar cost? Well, people who know me and know my guitars, they kind of want one of my guitars. Um, they, there's things about my guitars that they want, that, that they see, they know uh, I will, the average person will call me up and say, hey, I want one of your guitars. I'll ask them a series of questions. They don't know what's coming. They have an idea. Uh, it might be a cigar box, it might be an arch top, whatever. They have a basic idea what the product is. But I'll ask them some questions and I take over. I'm not one of those people that gets on the phone and is a people pleaser and says, oh, I want this and I want this. I've had some people ask me some, for some really odd stuff and all the specific hardware and electronics that go in a cigar box that's not worth $6. Steer away from that. If you're going to build something that's unique, and you're known to be a craftsperson, they'll enjoy your art. Now, the difference between art and, and a functional instrument is it's pretty to look at, but I doubt very many people are gonna play your guitar one time and say, this sounds terrible, I played a ton of money for it, now I'm gonna hang it on the wall until my wife says it doesn't go with the Renoirs and all that kind of stuff and it goes out in a yard sale. So again, know your product, know your market, know what you're selling and do not elevate what you're selling by what's in your brain versus somebody else. So, to that point, the guitar gets there. Somebody says, this is not what I wanted. I expected much better intonation. I expected much better action. That's the problem with most beginning uh, cigar box guitar players. They, you know, there's no frets. The action is that high. Guitar players don't want that. You know, they may find your, your instrument novel and play it a couple of times during a gig to have the crowd uh, be interested. Somebody can play a guitar really well, can play something like this and make it look really good. And it's their talent that does that, not your action being that high. So again, worst thing that happens, it gets there. They say, this is not what I wanted. This is much cheaper built. Um, the intonation is terrible. The action is too high. Um, the tuners are terrible. Um, I feel ripped off. I want my money back. Well, their money back means the price of the guitar. It means the tariff. And it means the shipping. Now, guess what? If you want the guitar back, you pay to ship it back. And that can be as much or even more. So now my $15 guitar is $300 out of my pocket. Know what you're selling. Know what your market is. Don't establish that in Europe. Establish it around where you are. Get comfortable with that. Take people's feedback. Check on your customers after you've built them a guitar a while later and see if they're still happy. That's step one. Next thing I want to talk about is know what you're shipping. Protect it. Know how delicate it is. So how delicate is this? What is the worst that can happen to this? Well, the can is the worst, it's, it's the most delicate part. The rest of it is like a baseball bat. I literally could go out and play baseball with this 
and hit the ball. The only thing that could happen is this can get crushed. So I may put a piece of wood in here that stops this from getting crushed. I would certainly wrap it with bubble wrap. I would protect the end and the top. And anything else I want to put in there, I would use this space. But this is the part that would get crushed if somebody steps on it. The guy throwing stuff on the Greyhound bus or in the van or on the airplane is not going to be really impressed because it says fragile guitar and it's in a box this big. Again, try not to get over 36 inches. I don't know if you've ever seen this one, but it's got burn sides. It's got, I don't even want to get into who's on this, but there's all kinds of signatures on this. This is irreplaceable to me. But again, what is it worth? I think you can, uh, uh, personally, I think someone would probably pay three fifty dollars or four dollars for this, and then the shipping is going to be another $50 without the tariffs and stuff. So is somebody going to pay for $425 for one of these? Good tuners got everything. I don't, I'm not selling stuff here. I'm just telling you, know what you're shipping. Know that you got to protect it. And try to keep the shipping costs down. Shipping costs are not going to do anything for the person that's buying it. When you get into something like this, a little bit more goes into packing. The good news about this one is, again, it's less than 36 inches tall. So that gives me some room to pad here and here. If I get a box that's a little bit wider this way, I can actually tilt this like this. Instead of it being 36 inches, I can make it a little narrower, but the box gets wider. My experience, especially with the United States Postal Service, the box getting over 36 inches goes up to the next tier. When you get over 48 inches, and I mean this much millimeters over, you go into the bonus round, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Now, again, talking about what you're shipping. I'm gonna show you a guitar that everybody thinks they want when it comes to arch tops, the Econo arch tops. It's one of these. It's the Colorama Silvertone. Ooh, ah. Uh. Now, you want one of these, trust me. And you'll chase around and chase around. You'll see them on eBay thousand dollars I've seen them for more than that I've seen them for 750 and there's always a reserve and the reserve is never met and then there's another hundred a hundred and twenty five dollars to ship it so they're gonna put it in a big box and whatever if you have ever held one of these you've heard Bob Log talk about playing a sixteen dollar and fifty cent guitar yeah this is it this is one of the cheapest lightest guitars and all the arch tops I've handled, if I had to say the one that was probably not going to be very dependable, that was just meant to make it from Christmas to Easter till the kid burned out on not being able to play it, this is the one. Now, so if you pack this in a box, let me grab the tape measure here and we'll see what we've got. we're right at 41 inches. So without doing any padding on the top and bottom, by the time get, that gets done, we're into a box that's almost four feet tall. Again, if we set it this way, but anything that you gain on limiting the height, you are gonna tear up because with padding and bubble wrap and who knows what, because if somebody throws this guitar in a box regardless how much bubble wrap you have on it and something heavy goes on it and it hits that bridge guess what it's going to crater the top of this guitar so part of the responsibility of you selling a guitar like this is you pick it up you find it at a yard sale whatever it is you're doing you jack up the price you sell it it gets there and it's broken if you have not insured it properly and you can't verify when you file the claim somebody would look at this and say okay this guitar was sixteen dollars and fifty cents between 19 
um, 56, and by the time they got rid of it in 1962, it had gone up to 19 something. So I'll look at that. Now, you want to verify everything about the guitar before you ship it because it gets their tore up. Not only is the purse going to be disappointed, they're going to expect somebody to refund their money and you got to recover your shipping costs or you've just lost out a ton of money. I tell people about economics is this. Say you're doing tree work and you're doing a municipal market of tree work and you're your take-home money at the end of the day after all your workman's comp and uh, taxes and equipment payments is 10%. That means $10 for every $100 you do. So if you take a loss of $100, it takes you 10 times the work that you've done to make up for that $100 just to get back to zero and then by the time so you end up about three and a half times where the work exposure to get your money back and you've lost all this other work you could have been doing at a profit so be careful shipping these cheap old arch tops if you try to save money doing it and something happens it's going to be bad here's one you all know this one this is the Archcraft junk pile. This one had the big hole in it. There's episodes up there about how bad this guitar was. There's a playlist up there. Troy Murrah has run through this thing. There's another artist coming into LA pretty soon that I think I'm gonna try to play it, have play it. This guitar was made in 1933 by K and I have put a lot of time into it, but I put binding all over it, whatever. It's one of those guitars you'll never get your money back on it, on the effort you've put into it. But you ship this, you ship it wrong, it gets crushed, you're done, money out the window, effort out the window, and everybody, since you're selling the guitar, is looking back at you to cover the cost. People who want a guitar, believe it or not, they actually want to end up holding and playing a playable guitar not something that's smashed and a bunch of sob stories so it's part of doing business if you're going to sell guitars okay guys i told you that this is not a good setup i actually have this guitar case sitting on a seat made out of an old antique tractor seat and it's kind of just sitting up here but and this is kind of puts me in uncompromising positions but if you are here on this channel to check out my physique, you are a sick freak. That is for sure. So anyway, let's talk about guitar cases. I really want to talk to you about, don't look at the top of my head, my hairstyle. Remember, I'm Knuff. I am Knuff. I have to do this. I mean, everybody's on these trend things, really. I've been there since... 1961, March of 1961, that's right. Anyway, guitar cases. Anybody that does arch tops, picks up arch topses, arch topses, arch tops. We are in the business of finding cases that will fit arch tops. And the worst thing that you can do is find a case where it doesn't fit and you're jamming it in there and something happens. This is an old Gibson case right here. And... I hope you're liking the guitars you're seeing here tonight. You know Bob the Junk Pile, right? Now these good cases have this thing that flips up like so. Now, when you look inside of a case, you'll see this Elvis painting fuzzy velvet stuff up here. You'll see strings. You will see the bridge line, if you can see that right there. This part right here is sitting right there. So let me ask you this. I put this in the case. This is nice and cozy. And I put this on here. And somebody throws it in the plane or the truck. And somebody throws something on top of it and impacts it right there at the high point of the case. What's going to happen? Well, that strike is going to hit and focus everything on the floating bridge. And when you get the guitar to where it's going, it's going to be cracked or split right there. Or, more often than not, this part of the neck 
right here, if it's not padded up, if there's a gap between this part here, because remember, this is arched. This is higher than this. So if you don't have a t-shirt or something here putting this up, when the impact hits, th there's nothing supported. It turns this into a teeter-totter and will snap it. More people have come off of planes with their guitar neck snapped right here than anywhere. Or, again, since this arch top won first place at the Antelope Valley Fair, yeah, there's an Antelope Valley Fair t-shirt sitting right under that delicate spot. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you people. There it is. So, I'm going to put that t-shirt right underneath there. Now, do I think it's a good idea to ship guitars in cases? No, for two reasons. Number one, this case is very heavy. And it's going to ship by weight. It's going to make the box bigger and longer. And you're going to end up with an astronomical shipping cost. And number two, if I want someone to think, you know what? I wonder if there's a guitar in that package right there. I wonder if it's an expensive guitar. Well, guess what? It says Gibson. It's a big case. It has a rise and a belly on the top. It tells you there's an arch top guitar in here. So I wouldn't be shipping in cases. I think the cheapest thing to find, more so than a guitar, is a case. So put your money into the box and not ship in cases. That's my advice to you. Okay, guys, let's talk about boxes now. Let me show you a really cool box. I have to find my tape measure, but this is a very large box, and they sell them at, at shipping places. Do you know that shipping places, part of their marketing plan is to sell you shipping products? Did you know that? That there's a markup for it? and. You know, you're there already, but this box is four foot two inches long. It is the biggest workout I've had in a long time. 21 inches wide. And eight, a little bit, almost nine inches deep. So they're going to calculate everything. So what came in this box? Well, the Galliano Junk Pile and another guitar that we saw in the Sean Mann Dude Collection. Remember that episode? Both of those guitars were in here. Now, I will tell you this without revealing what I paid for both guitars. If you divided that number by half, the shipping was more than the cost of one of the guitars. So this was up in the Bay Area of California, Northern California, and it shipped down to me. And so it was less than $100, but this big box put a lot of cost on the guitar. Now, there was nothing special about this box. It was padded up nice. Sean Mann, dude, I swear, he dumped everything he had to get rid of from his yard sale in there. Love you, dude. But if you're going to ship a guitar like this to Europe, I'm going to give you, uh, let you in on a secret that I think you're going to like. So the cost of, of a box like that, I have shipped um, enough Cigar Boss guitars and um, license plate guitars that are more of a, you know, say an eight or 10 inch square by 36 inch tall box. Those boxes are gonna cost you somewhere between 14 and $20 just for the box. A box like that is gonna be a little bit more, especially if you're buying it 
at the shipping outlet. Now they will tell you, we'll get it there for this and we'll package it up this way. Um, sometimes if you deny that and you pack it yourself, you'll find out that the insurance isn't going to be as good or whatever, but we'll deal with that. I don't like depending on other people to make sure that my stuff gets there okay. Because remember, your guitar has to get there okay. The person has to be happy with it. They have to play it. They have to walk on the price of the guitar, the price of the shipping, and the price of the taxation and tariff. So keep that in mind. I'm going to let you in on a little secret when it comes to shipping something like this. First off, this guitar is heavy. So that's going to factor in weight is, is one consideration. But when you start putting stuff on airplanes, short of it being ridiculously heavy, the size of the box is a big deal. And when you get up over four feet, you're going to hear prices like $800. If you let the box get too wide, you're going to hear prices like $1,400. So imagine someone in Europe will pay $3,000 for this guitar because it's individual. It's made for them. They look at it and they realize this is my guitar and it plays well. Uh, and I think you've seen somebody play this guitar and if you haven't I'm gonna give you a little look at that right now what this guitar will do some idea that somebody might be happy over there so we don't want it to get damaged so let me show you a little something we have in America you might have it elsewhere it's called a television have you ever heard about a television have you ever heard about a flat screen television so the first thing we got to do here is we got to decide that this guitar is at the very top to the bottom is 41 inches without anything happening without any padding up here without anything over here so I don't have to get a 48 inch box but getting closer is going to add a lot of money so again I don't have to stand this straight up I can tilt it like this and I will lose some height stretch it out a little bit but when you start getting into these boxes you have to cut them you have to put them all back together and if they don't hold up again you have a problem so ta-da welcome to the world of flat screen televisions oh there's one measurement i didn't tell you about and that is the depth of the guitar now Want to remember you got pickups and you've got an arch. The back of this is arched. You see it ever so slightly. So if you jam this in a box and this is the thing that's sticking out against the side of the box and it gets impacted, this guitar is rough, but I still don't want it being impacted. So I'm looking at roughly, bear with me here, about three and a quarter inches. So check this out they make these boxes they are for big screen televisions and mirrors this box is 40 inches tall we're just a tad over that so we're nowhere near the 48 but check this out 
this box telescopes out like this. You see this? So, I can tilt the box. Again, this is awkward. I can put the guitar in the box over here set the box at an angle this way or the guitar to angle this way and then figure out how far I can cut the box off and telescope everything together. This isn't working out the way I wanted it to, but it's kind of like an accordion. You cut the box where the guitar is tilted in there, you give yourself a little bit of room. The box is thick enough to house the guitar with a couple pieces of the thin styrofoam, pad the top and the bottom. And the best part about these boxes is the corners have a foam padding that come with the box. So the corners don't get crushed. You pad up the middle where the guitar is on the sides. You pack it full of newspaper, whatever you want, and you end up with a box that will hold an arch top that will arrive in Europe safely. And the cost, I'm not going to cite you that, but it's not, well, these boxes in America, by the time you get done paying California sales tax and stuff, you're at about $40 for the box. You're going to throw about half of it away unless you're smart enough to keep it and ship a cigar box in it or something, but um, you may be able, let's just say this, you're not gonna be anywhere near 800, you're really not gonna be that close to even half that, and if you take about a quarter of that off, you might be starting to get in the range. So, you got a $3,000 guitar being shipped to Europe for less than 500, now, the tax and stuff is going to be substantial on the $3,000 guitar and the insurance and stuff. you got to make sure that you're going to do that. So, I hope this has been valuable to you, even though you can't see what I'm talking about half the time. But again, this box telescopes out. You cut off what you don't need. You don't end up with a four-foot box. Your guitar is safe, and I'll show it to you and say goodbye once I have it wrapped up. Be right back. Can you hear me now? Can you see me now? There we go. All right, I am happy with this. It is 41 inches tall, it is 28 inches wide, and it is six inches deep. That is shipped from Southern California to Ireland. Once it gets there, you will hear it, I am sure. I have made a special request from the artist to play a song called Hell. You know what, I'm gonna give you a link to that song right up there because this is what you've been through listening to this episode, I'm sure. So in recap, number one, make sure that your customers think more of your instruments than you do. Number two, make sure that they understand there will be a shipping cost and there will be, if you're going out of the country, a tariff or a tax. They will have to hold it. They might inspect it. It might go through quarantine. It may not be as simple as just dropping it off at their door and calling it a day. Be sure that you have a backup plan if there is damage do not underinsure something just to try to declare it so you can save a buck because remember, they want the instrument, they want it to arrive there in one piece so they can inspect and play it. And if that doesn't happen, then all of the cost comes back to you. And then the worst case scenario is it gets there, you find out they were so loaded that night, it was come to Jesus, I'll never do this again loaded. And they picked you out of all the quadrillion, zillion people who are building cigar box guitars right now. And you have a shaky return policy. Welcome to <laughs> my world, of which I have never had even one of those <laughs> problems. You know what? I got better stuff to go to hell for than that. All right, guys, I hope this has helped you out. Give me some comments below. 
in your comments, tell us your horror stories about shipping or customers that freaked on you or whatever. Put that below. Uh, don't confess. I'm not a priest. I cannot absolve you of your sins. So don't give me your confession, but certainly share your horror story so we can all be abhorred. Give me a like and a subscribe, and I will see you next time. We'll talk about guitars. We'll talk about cool guitars next time.